Welcome to TT Online Community Voices, where we could be with information to make informed decisions. Today, we are talking about accessing social assistance in these trying times that we can all relate to. The intent, of course, making sure that you are aware of what, how, and where you can access help. Joining me to do that this morning is Carrie Ann Joseph, Corporate Communications Officer of the National Community for, rather, National Commission for Self Help. Carrie Ann, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. And also in the discussion today is uh, the Deputy Director of the Social Welfare, Miss Christine John Guy. Good day and welcome. Thank you for having us. Ladies, we are getting straight into the discussion because there are some distinctions that need to be made between the two entities. I'll start with you because as the name implies, the National Commission for Self-Help is all about making sure whether individuals, entrepreneurs, we can help ourselves. Who is the National Commission for Self-Help? Okay, so the National Commission for Self-Help Limited is a non-profit government entity and we are mandated to encourage a spirit of self-help and encourage really and truly that entrepreneurial spirit that you speak about. What we do particularly is provide persons with assistance in the form of grants, okay. particularly persons who are experiencing levels of poverty in their current situation. Okay. So we really seek to treat with the elderly, single parent households, those who are less fortunate, okay. And we try to bring a sense of relief and improve their living conditions through our grant distributions. Now, when you've specified the persons in, uh, in terms of elderly or experiencing poverty, it would mean that there is set criteria that helps you to determine who's entitled to these grants. That is absolutely correct, Ayinka. So criteria has been set and that is what the commission functions on. So in as much as we may have persons applying for grants, mm -hmm. It would depend on the criteria. Whether they meet that criteria, it is then determined. It goes through a process of approval by our board of directors. And then from there, the grant is usually implemented. So let's specify. If we were to look at elderly seeking assistance, what would be the age group, for example, that would warrant an elderly person's age? Well, elderly would really and truly encompass from senior citizens go right up. Okay. So... That bracket is pretty wide. It's mm. a pretty wide bracket and there's no limit to say that we would cut off an elderly age limit. You understand? What would it look like, an application that is, for John Doe applying for help? Is it that it's just by virtue of their age and not receiving pension? Or are they receiving pension or NIS grants additionally? What are the stipulations? Well, in terms of stipulations, we would have to look at the their current financial situation. Okay. So if they're in a household that brings in just a minimal income, that makes them eligible, of course. Right? Um, the application form, which is also available on our website, you can see clearly exactly what the other specifications are. I don't want to speak too much into it for the lack of not um, missing out Right. Any items, but our grant application form, it's available on our website. I can give the website address. That is www.ncshl.co.tt. Okay. Now, we, spoke, we mentioned elderly. We talk about patients from impoverished homes. Can we get a snapshot then of the issues that would warrant grants or be value, valued for grant applications? Okay, well, there's several issues. Now, we have grants that are broken up into three categories. Okay. We have the MRRG, which is the Minor Repairs Reconstruction Grant, and that treats with persons who are in need of, let's say, roof repairs or possibly wall repairs, retaining walls, that type of thing, okay. at their property, and it is valued up to $15,000. Right. The property itself, residential, community, it doesn't matter location? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. And then we also have the Emergency Repair Reconstruction Assistance Grant. How does that, that differ? One, that one is specific to persons who've been impacted by natural disasters. And that is really relevant in this particular period because we are in the wet and hurricane mm -hmm. season. So that one, usually... So, for instance, we would have had instances recently right. where we had windstorms and heavy flooding and rainfall. 
So those grants, we go and we identify the areas that have been impacted. Right. Project officers do assessments on spot, and usually in instances like those, grants are turned around within a seven-day period, within a Beautiful. week usually. Right. So those are valued up to $25,000, as I would have mentioned. And we also have our development project grants. Now, development project grants, those treat with communities that are in need of road construction repair. We assist with bridge building as well and repair. Okay. But that one, we don't have a, let's say, like a set budget that okay. we use for that one. That one is really determined based on the need of the community right, the assessment as itself. well as the board of directors. Now, in terms of these grants, they may seem to be very familiar <laughs> because they sound similar to some that we may be entitled to through social welfare. Yeah. Social welfare does actually grant grants, <laughs> monetary benefits to yeah. community community persons. The application process being slightly different. Yes, it it is different. So, how can we compare the two? How does social welfare's function differ a little from National Commission of Self Help? Okay. All right, the Social Welfare Division is one of the divisions within the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services. Right. And this division is responsible really for grant administration. Right. Mm. So we issue grants to individuals uh, who are from a particular category of individuals. Right. So we have the elderly, disabled, and the injured, indigent. Right. right. Those are needy persons who can vary age vary, right. right, from birth up to adulthood. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are the grants. Plus we, we have a number, a range of grants mm -hmm. that are issued by the social welfare. We will definitely get into those. <laughs> but from what yeah. you're saying, what I'm hearing is that you have reoccurring needs versus yeah. occasional yeah. needs. Correct. Because yeah. if we're talking about seasonal instances of natural disasters, for example, or adverse weather, versus your monthly needs as a differently abled person, right. your administration is going yeah. to operate like, differently. Like self-help, there is a, one of the units on, on the, in the ministry, the mm -hmm. National Social Development Program that deals with similar grants like the National Social, um, like self-help. Ah. Right? These grants are for minor house repairs, electrical work or plumbing. Right. right. So the chances of being able to access a grant from either of these entities in the event of those two items are going to be greater because you're going to be more informed. Yes. We're getting into the meat of the matter now. Now, continuing the discussion along the lines of defining national self-help, self can also mean entrepreneurs, yes? That's correct. It can include anyone. But really and truly, the National Commission for Self-Help, when we say self-help, it really means a partnership between the organization right. as well as the person who is applying, the applicant, and then after they become a recipient. So what we do particularly would be to provide purchase orders that would cover the cost of the materials that they need for their construction works. Okay. And they themselves are to now source labor to complete their projects. Okay, so okay. it's a bit of a helping hand that we really give Got to the community. And of course, teach a man to fish is the mentality. You I love it. You him for a lifetime. Yeah. I see it, I see it. Now, in terms of those endeavors, would you be able to quantify, for example, what that could look like on an annual or perhaps quarterly basis, smaller bite size amounts? Okay. Are there limitations, for example, as to how many times a single person can apply? Well, we try to keep the system fair. So if it is that, again, in as much as we may have thousands of applications that come into us, we have to adhere to our criteria and we also have to be mindful that we need to treat with the most deserving persons mm. at soonest. So those persons are treated with in an order of priority. Right. In as much as some people may think that their living situation is dire, mm -hmm. right. there's always yes. someone who is much worse off than you are. So that requires applicants to now be incredibly patient. So while the process is taking place, it doesn't mean that they are not going to receive these grants, mm. but it does mean that we are doing the best that we can in terms of choosing the, the applicant who would 
who is really in the most dire need right. to get them on their feet again, so to speak, give that to, lift, hand. <laughs> to lift, to give the helping hand again and to lift their spirits. In terms of a dollar value that we would have distributed, we can say over the last five years, mm -hmm. the commission across Trinidad and Tobago, because we have three regional offices, we have two here in Trinidad, one in North, mm -hmm. the other one in South Trinidad, mm -hmm. and then we have our regional office in Tobago. Right. So over the last five years, we can safely say that as of August this month, the commission would have distributed $58 million, just over $58 million okay. and rising over the last five years. Okay. Now, with the impact of COVID, we would have had to pause in terms of our distribution for safety reasons, mm -hmm. of course. We recently resumed our distribution exercises, thankfully. One of the first ones was a drive through first ever drive through grant distribution mm. that is keeping the safety of our staff and as citizens. well as the citizens Beautiful. in mind. That took place at our Tobago office recently. Okay. Just in the month of August as well. So come hell or high water, you're going to get to the people. That's <laughs> correct. That is exactly what that means. We, we need find to a way it. to get we there. We need to know it. Now, that, that is different to the social welfare where yeah. we have monthly actual Grants. issuance. Yeah. How does that function? And has that been impacted by the pandemic adversely as okay. well? Right. So as you're aware, the Ministry of Social Development was determined as one of the essential ministries so we continue to work regardless right. of pandemic because we have this we are serving the most vulnerable right um with respect to as i said we had we have varying grants mm -hmm. and there are different qualifying criteria okay. for the grants so we have the grants for seniors mm -hmm. which is the senior citizens pension right and the criteria is that well the senior citizens pension and our public assistance are two of our major grants and these are guided by legislation. Right. So we have the Senior Citizens Pension Act, mm -hmm. which guides and manages the Senior Citizens Pension and the Public Assistance Act. Right. So the criteria for qualification is stated in the Act. So persons must be age 65 or older. Right. Um, must not have an income that exceeds 5,500 per month. Right. And... Um, Age income and resident criteria, which seems to be, which most of the time is our most challenging, huh? yeah. right? The resident doesn't mean citizenship. Mm. It's resident, as according to the Immigration Act, is that you must have, been, you must be legally residing in the country, right? Right. So basic so, criteria for your so elderly. so that is for the elderly. Our public assistance now is for anyone else who. Uh, who meets the criteria gotcha. and satisfies both the income and we also have a means test attached to that. Okay. So to qualify for the public assistance, you must be an adult age 18 years. Okay. So you can be paid up to once you continue to meet the criteria for the grant. Right. Um, so for the duration of your life. So, right. that so it's age mm -hmm. and you must be medically certified as disabled from earning. Okay. I saw the grant is not for persons who are unemployed, but really for persons who are disabled from earning and are so certified right. medically. Once you meet that criteria. Once you meet the criteria, you pass the standard, there's a standard means that's, that is just attached to that, okay. which is based on income. Mm -hmm. So the basic income is fourteen thirty nine per adult. Okay. Right? That is the minimum. Right. Um, so that is for the public assistance. Right. Our disabled persons, we have a disability assistance grant mm -hmm. and that is paid from age 18 right up. So it could go up until 65 and then they apply for the senior citizens right. pension or the persons could continue to receive disability, but they cannot get two Most grants at the, same at the same time. Okay. Right. So as, the, as it state disability, you must be permanently disabled. Okay. Meet the income criteria as well as your resident criteria in order to qualify for that grant. Okay. And we have, there's a disability assistance grant for children as well. That was introduced I think in 2019. Okay. I right, so those are for children who are disabled under the age of 18 years. So that we have a caretaker or an adult. Right. So yeah, right. Apply. So it's either paid to the guardian or parent of okay. the child. Um, so these are all continuously issued. And however. these are monthly grants right. that are 
pay to the person. So, you know, these persons depend on this grant. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's either paid via check right. or direct deposit into the person's account. Now, during the pandemic, that wouldn't necessarily have changed because it's direct no. deposits is, of course, minimal contact. Yeah. But the check deposits would still mean that they would go through essential services like banks. Yeah, they have to go to the bank and they may have to go to the post office to collect checks. Mm-hmm. But with respect to our applica- our clients coming into the office, our offices, right? Mm-hmm. We have 10, 11 locations across Toronto and Tobago. Okay. 10 in Toronto and one in Tobago. Right? And persons go to the, visit the offices to apply right. for the grant. Um, our senior citizens pension earlier this year, in April this year, we launched our online application for the senior citizens pension. And so far that has been going well. A person's been utilizing the online application process instead of going into the office. Beautiful. So because you want to limit the interaction or right. the contact with the persons. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that has been working well, but the other persons, the others still visit. Right. But you know, we have to maintain um, physical distancing physical and, all, distance and yes. all, all such. And officers still visit because the nature of the grant is that the officers, we have officers assigned to districts and areas who visit the clients mm-hmm. based on their application. Right. So, so as an act of maintenance. So it is still maintained because persons are coming in. With COVID, as you can understand, there are more persons visiting our offices because there's a bit of need out there. Persons have lost their job for one reason or the other, right. or may have fallen ill, even as a result of COVID. So we have those persons to support. Um, there is the, our food support program right, that covers a wider range of persons. Mm-hmm. So persons who may have lost income as a result of COVID, okay. Right, can apply and get a food support grant. Right. And that is a monthly grant as well. Ooh. But we have varying amounts depending on family size. That is how that is paid. And uh, cool. well, during the COVID period, you know, the, we had the salary relief um, grant that was paid by the ministry. Right. And also assistance was given in terms of with food support. So they issued a food. Food now, support grants. We know that the ministry has some 19 different types of grants. So, so I, I'm not going to have you go through that entire <laughs> list. So we, that's, we, we call it, a, we have a range of grants right. under the general assistance grant. Okay. And they assist persons. So we, we assist with household, um, appliances and furniture, um, books. So we assist persons there through in disaster. Okay. So in disaster, when they, if right. they lose their household appliances or furniture, they, we have due to an due to assistance up right. to 10,000. And for regular clients who are in need of or replacement of their items, can get an assistance up to 6,000 mm. to replace those items. We have assistance to diet. We have a range of grants. Mm. Dietary assistance, pharmaceutical, rental assistance. So even persons who have suffered a vic- eviction during this COVID period right. as well, we granted assistance under a rental assistance program. Okay. Right? And that, that ranges from three months up to the maximum of one year. One year. Mm-hmm. All right. So the, the ministry really has a wide range of grants. Now, we will be revisiting some of those grants in greater detail, but I do want to get into time specifics because while you may have those continuous monthly payouts, yeah. we have more periodical increments or assistance granted, that is, by the National Commission for Self-Help. And that might mean that there are stipulated time frames for the application process itself and even the follow-up thereafter. So walk me through what it looks like from application to grants in hand for example, in the case of persons particularly affected by natural disasters. As you mentioned before, that seven-day time period is your your maximum, I imagine, because you want that quickly. That's correct. You want to get those people back on their feet as quickly as possible. So we come into the office. We've experienced flood in the non-flood prone areas. So you're definitely fish out of water, no pun intended. And you come to the office or you go online. What next? Okay, now before we even get to that point, our CEO, Mr. Elroy Julian, Mm -hmm. he is very much efficient in terms of treating with requests, right? Be it areas of natural disaster, be it areas of persons who are just in need of financial assistance to repair, to do structural repairs to their home. So CEO is usually 
in collaboration with project officers and the leadership team, so corporate communications as well, any news story that would apply to persons who have been impacted. So let's say there's been a windstorm, there's mm -hmm. been a tornado. Right. Just recently, CEO made the trip down to Losero for that tornado that was in the news. Mm -hmm. So we go out there on the ground. Ah, That's so the before first step. Someone actually before the application, okay. we actually go to you. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that you have to be impacted and sit and wonder, Where what do I do all? now? Where mm -hmm. do I go? Mm -hmm. we, once we know that something has happened in a particular area, we get on the ground, right? So taking out the application forms, mm -hmm. taking photos of the site, finding out exactly what people would need right. at that site. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the determination is made by CEO on the spot. Okay, yes, okay. we're going to assess, we're going to assist these persons and mm -hmm. we're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna assist this one. And from there, nice. the application process begins. Right. Now, during that application process, if a person needed to follow up, how do we do that? Is there an assigned officer that you're continuously in contact Definitely. with? Definitely. Now, our project officers, we have project officers assigned to each of the regional offices. So you have North project officers covering North Trinidad, mm -hmm. South project officers covering that region, and Tobago project officers. So these project officers, again, responsible for going out on the field, and they are assigned to the various constituencies. Mm -hmm. So based on the constituency that you are assigned to, mm -hmm. you are now that applicant's contact person. Okay. You can also call our regional offices right. and you can get follow-up information from our front desk staff. However, if it is you want to get something a little bit more in depth, you're assigned your, assigned, your assigned project officer is really the person who can treat with your specific need. Now, talk to me about after. I understand that they issue the grant, the actual individual is responsible for finding the labor and completing the job. Is there a follow-up to confirm that funds are used as promised or intended? Perhaps? I am so happy that you asked that question because in the past, we've had issues, fortunately and unfortunately in mm -hmm. some instances, where people, I should say unfortunately, sometimes people, we know that they're already coming from well, no. reduced means, right. so to speak, mm -hmm. right? But we know now that, okay, fine, the grant is now being made available to you. But one of the key elements is figuring out whether the person can then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the time that they've received the grant, can they afford to get themselves the labor, mm -hmm. right? So now that brings us to the point of a project that we're currently working on right now, which is very exciting because we are preparing to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity is known for assisting with labor. Right. So that in itself would also give assistance mm. to further assistance to people. So if it is in the event that you receive the grant and you still need a little more support to get your labor costs covered, right. We're going to be engaging Beautiful. the Habitat for Humanity soon. A big gap is filled there. A <laughs> huge gap is filled there. It sounds that way. I hope I answered your question. Absolutely. Because the time frame is of the essence, but making sure that things are done timely may not be within their means. That's so correct. that facet of Habitat for Humanity is going to save a lot of time. <laughs> we also really encourage persons to make use of the materials as soon as they get it. Right. Just last week, we had like about three, we had three grand distribution ceremonies. One was held at this venue and we covered the Dego Martin area. We also made it across to La Hocata Tal Paro. Right. Right. And Sangre Grande as well. And in each of those grand distribution ceremonies, what we always encourage people to do, as soon as you receive your purchase order, go to the hardware right away. Right. Don't waste time. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get your materials so that you can get your repair works started right as away. soon as possible right now we've had people unfortunately who sometimes they get the materials and they let it sit by the way right mm -hmm. now that's not something that we can really and truly say assist you with further right but the, which is why we encourage you so strongly to get your materials quickly and mm -hmm. get the work done right away not to stall on it because at the end of the day there are lots of people who have been applying right so you want to make sure now that you've been assigned a grant, you want to make sure that you really put it to use as quickly as possible.
Now, that echoes the sentiment of the ministry because social development is continuously issuing those grants, so they yeah. need to continuously check, yeah. making sure that not only are you using it for the intended purpose, but that you are still in need. Yes. You echo yes. those sentiments, for of, sure. Of course. Um, the senior citizens' pension, once that is granted, it continues. Right? So once they meet the criteria, that one continues. But the public assistance grant is reviewable. Right. So we review to ensure we follow up ensure that the children are at school okay. or if you are ill that you are still attending doctor mm -hmm. or something right? right because they are visiting and remember the, our officers go into the home mm -hmm. so we'll be able to assess the home conditions and make recommendations mm -hmm. there okay, okay. Right? so if if you go into a home setting and you realize that there are some issues maybe some issues here we can always refer refer counseling to right. our family services yeah, they, because they offer the psychosocial counseling. Which is an important so, point. Because before we get into the additional services that may not be tangible, but just as necessary yeah. in these trying times, you did mention that they assess. So does that mean that these grants can be revoked? Of, of course, the grants, the grants are reviewable. Mm -hmm. So if circumstances change, for example, a person who's in receipt of pension and maybe out of the country or actually living out of the country, mm. and the law state that you, when you leave, your grant is discontinued. But you know, we'd have persons who would not inform, right, and continue. But once we have the information, come, we will inactivate the grant. Okay, and we review those for public assistance as well. We review to ensure that the persons are still in need and require the grants. Okay. Right. Now, touching on those non tangibles, making those referrals to the other services that fall under social development. Yeah. We are now talking about therapy, family, yeah. counseling, and what other endeavors? Right. So, so the, the family services will deal with the individuals as a whole. Mm -hmm. So, we will work with, the, work with the family, work with the individuals. So, they work with families mm -hmm. and individuals. So, they will do their counseling right. and um, work with that family to move them from one place to the other mm -hmm. right we have other support divisions within the ministry mm -hmm. um, our disability affairs mm -hmm. unit deals with matters re um, that relate to our disabled the, well it, not just our clients disability mm -hmm. assistance clients but the disabled within in the, general in general ah, okay. right? and there's also the division of aging as well they deal with matters relating to aging so they deal with homes, things like elder abuse, and all of that. So These they have, things exist where we can actually report and investigate yes. specifically through the ministry. Of so course, they have their investigators, their um, officers who will go and investigate matters. So we have a report of an elder abuse in a home. They will... Um, they, they, they will and these are public that. and private homes or specifically the... Um, once a report comes in with relating to an elderly person, mm -hmm. they will they will intervene. Beautiful. All right. So privately, yes, they cannot do really, but they, they work with the families. Right. To get. So they work through the family itself to continue yeah. an investigation and perhaps escalate yeah. accordingly. Of course. I'm, l I'm loving this information because, again, we think often of the grants, the tangible, the money, the physical, of the world, even the material being issue to us. But then the mental, the emotional is also necessary. The support beyond getting the actual tangible goods to effectively do the job. We're also seeing that gap being bridged. And I'm sure many citizens had no idea that these opportunities are available for them. So let's get to the specifics of how to contact. The pandemic has posed an entirely new way to communicate. So are we looking at virtual options in addition to in-store or in-house options? A hybrid, strictly one or the other? I'll begin with you. Well, actually, Ms. Guy, I'll begin with you. Because learning of those new options to report things, yeah. are they all online? Are they all in-house? Well, the, the ministry has a website. Mm -hmm. The information is online. They, in addition, they have a, they ch a chat bot. Right. So you can ask questions. Real person? <laughs> a robot, a little robot chat, but okay. Right? So you can ask to you post your questions there. Or you can if you post your questions or your concerns on the ministry's website, someone will get back to you. Okay. So they are on Facebook, they are on Twitter, they are on all the social media um, platform. Right? And any further information on the ministry is there on their website. Mm -hmm. All the divisions and the services offered by the ministry 
uh, on the website. All right, so, sounds uh, beautiful. Do we have a hybrid or are we all online? <laughs> we do both. We yes. use all avenues so that business can contact us. We have our website, mm -hmm. I'll repeat it, www.nchl.co.tt. You can also contact us via phone at 612-627-4. And you can visit our social media pages. We are on Facebook, we're on YouTube, okay. YouTube channel, displaying our grant yeah. distributions. And <laughs> we're also on Instagram. Yeah. So you can follow us, like, and share. Yeah. Now, it's definitely about sharing. Sharing the information so that people can make more informed decisions. And of course, it was a lot to condense into just a couple moments yeah. of chat. But if people wanted to reach out and even volunteer them, themselves, becoming involved in these projects, becoming involved with Habitat for Humanity, or even reporting persons who may be in need of services yeah. under the division, all of this can be done online and through telephone as well, as well as in person, yes? Yes, yes. Yes, yes right now our offices are not exactly treating with persons on the public. We do have our drop box assigned mm -hmm. outside of each um regional location. office mm. so you can come in you can collect forms and you can also yeah. drop off your application forms at our office right on like self-help we'll be we're still treating with individuals mm -hmm. our offices are open daily eight to four and um across the different districts so port of spain our office is on duke and richmond street mm -hmm. our Aranguez office is in mts plaza there's an office at San Fernando, um, Shogwanas, um, Princess Town, Rio Claro, Penal, mm -hmm. Point Fortin, San Grande, and Tobago. Mm, so I'm those are our 11 offices. I feel that I should give some more information as to our locations as well. By so all means. we're on Abercrombie Street in Port of Spain, our mm -hmm. North Regional Office. And then our Marabella office, or South office, I should say, is at 54 Southern Main Road, Marabella. Mm -hmm. And then we have our Tobago office located at number 91, Barrington's Court. We are also in office. Full day, the staff yeah. is fully in office, but we're just not receiving people into the building. Right, so because, speak, of the yeah, pandemic, because of the pandemic. Because of the pandemic. We have to look at protocol being in place. But the Ministry of Social Development is still operating at the same hours? Yes, we are still operating. Eight to four, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. Right? We see clients on a daily basis. They mm -hmm. don't stop. Right? <laughs> now, I hope they don't because we definitely need to make sure that all of these efforts to reach persons go out there. A lot of people are struggling at home, unsure where to go. And from what we're hearing this afternoon, we are learning that there can be one or the other or both, depending That's on correct. the situation, mm -hmm. whether yeah. it's seasonal or continuous. Right. Yeah. So that Every single citizen should be able to at least have the conversation now of what to do next, whether it is natural disaster, occasional, or continuous. We have the support, and that yeah. is what's important. Yes. Now, I know that you are going to get much more questions from persons when it comes to the eligibility, the specifics of the application process, of yeah. the investigations on what they look for, what to change and what to do. So these are the ongoing discussions that I hope that we continue to have, not just virtually, not just online, sure. but within our communities, absolutely. I imagine you both have community efforts that you do occasionally, perhaps quarterly or even annually. So are there endeavors that we can look forward to to hear more from each institution? Definitely. We also, I want to also highlight the fact that we treat with single parents as well. So not just natural disaster, but mm -hmm. anybody, any time of the year, right. whatever your need may be, you can come to us. In terms of reaching out to the public, we usually host caravans, community caravans is what we call them, where we go out into different areas. Right. But those have been just postponed a bit because of the pandemic. So once restrictions are lifted and eased as time progresses, right. we're going to resume those community caravans where we'll be sharing information about the all of the grants that the yeah. commission can afford persons. Yeah. How often do those caravans usually take place? Now, in the past, they would happen monthly. Okay. Right? So they're pretty, pretty frequent. frequent. <laughs> yes. Pretty frequent um, community caravans. And are they simultaneously done across the country or one location per month? How usually it? it's usually it's about one or two locations per month. Okay. One or two locations. So we try to get out into the the 
country or so we would say communities, rural areas. Yeah. Rural rural areas. areas. Exactly. That's where we try to go with our caravans because we recognize too that those people may not necessarily have the funds to get yeah. transportation to, to come, come to, to the, the offices, office. Right. And we don't know if it is they have internet accessibility. Right. So we go to them as much as we can. We get out into the community to reach yes. people. Now, community development continuously has programs that people can access. Has that changed at all with the pandemic in terms of reaching the people where they are? Yeah. The um, frequency is the same, yes? Yeah. Well, the, like um, self-help, the ministry had caravans that mm-hmm. they used to do on a monthly basis, right? Okay. But COVID has so- suddenly halted that. But what is happening now? So they are reaching out to NGOs and other groups that may request information on the ministry. Mm-hmm. And we have those sessions virtual. Beautiful. So those are ongoing virtual sessions since the pandemic has started that we, has now, we have now implemented. So, so persons need to stay close to their devices <laughs> or their community leaders yeah. to be able to get the information as you are going to them. Yeah. Yeah, we've given them a lot today, <laughs> but if you've missed it, there are other methods to get yeah. information, access, and make sure that you are helping yourself and your community socially develop as well. Yes, yeah? yes. Now, ladies, I know we've covered a lot, but when we talk about upcoming projects, when we talk about the specifics or the variety of persons that you're able to reach, we would need an entire show all over again. Yeah. So for the most part, if you wanted to have members of the public remember top of mind social development target groups, mm-hmm. can you perhaps name your top five? So what target group, top three mainly, mm-hmm. the elderly, right, disabled, and the persons in need. Okay. Everybody group. else. Everybody else. <laughs> And right. they can reach you virtually and yeah, in the office. Right. So we visit the offices. You could go online or information on our location is on the on the website. Mm-hmm. We could contact the number 623-2608. That is the ministry's number. And uh, there's always someone there to answer because we have a call center who will answer calls and queries and give information on the ministry. So, all the time. And if we were to look at self-help, who are we looking at? Target Talk groups. <laughs> that would be anybody right now who is experiencing financial difficulty. So we would cover single parents. We would cover the elderly. Uh, we tend to use the word, we do, yeah, the word destitute sometimes comes to mind, okay. but those who are really and truly impacted by yeah. poverty, right. right? So those particular groups, single parents, elderly, Poverty stricken generally is who we would assist and victims of natural disaster. Keeping in mind the wet and hurricane season, we are currently in that yeah. season. Mm-hmm. And if they themselves, the victims, cannot reach out to us, remember that you have family members, you have friends, they can see the information and get it to you. Mm-hmm. You may not be the person, but use your resources that are nearest mm-hmm. to you and people that you can rely on. I love how these sentiments are being echoed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Because you're equipped, you're ready. You're yeah. ready. And you are here for the people. Yeah. So it is our hope that this information reaches you or somebody in need in time. Regardless of your situation, there are ways to speak to and persons within your very communities as we at the Ministry of Sports and Community Development are ready to help. That's the sentiments I hope everybody takes away from this edition of TT Online Community Voices. Thank you, ladies, very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.